Hey everyone, and welcome back to my 12.17 mid lane tier list. Quite a lot has changed this patch. There's been a lot of meta champs changed, and also the Zonia's changes are pretty big. So I'm going to go over all that, and I'll timestamp everything below. If you just want to see the finished tier list, just go to the end. Uh, but for now, let's get started. So the first one was Ari. In 12.17, Ari had her base health decreased and charm duration decreased early. Now, they actually didn't put the base health thing here, but I think it was down by about like 40 or 50. I actually can't really remember how much it was, but base health being decreased is kind of annoying for Ari. She can get all in very early in the game. Charm duration decreased early. This is kind of interesting. I don't think it's like a huge deal, honestly. I think Ari will still be really, really good at what she's designed to do, which is be like a really safe blind pick. And these things don't really change it. It's perhaps more punishing um, for Ari's that are less skilled with her. And I actually do think that's sort of a big thing because I think Ari is a champ that is very easy to pick up right now and just succeed with. So I will probably put Ari as like a very high A+. I think she's still very, very strong, especially if you know how to play her. But a huge part of Ari's strength is that you basically don't need to know how to play her. Um, but I think she will still be probably a premier, uh, maybe, yeah, I'd say still the best overall mid lane blind pick. Next up, we have Azir. So W, AP scaling decreased, cooldown increased early, E cooldown decreased. These are pretty big. Uh, Azir W is a cooldown that you will use quite a bit uh, on cooldown in the in the laning phase, both for harassing your opponent um, and also just for pushing the wave. And it's very, very cheap. So it is something you can kind of cast over and over. So this is quite annoying. That being said, you do max this first, obviously. Um, so you do get the cooldown down reasonably fast, but it, it kind of makes Azir's early lane, which is already very, very strong, a little bit weaker. So yeah, it's kind of annoying. I think this is sort of whatever. It makes you do less damage in the late game, but uh, for the most part, Azir is just poking people at the moment. It's not that often that you're just like hitting tanks. So I, I don't think this is like a massive deal. This, however, I think is quite big. So E shifting sands, cooldown up. This is Azir's main safety. And also it's the ability you max last. So you're really going to feel like this higher cooldown of three more seconds a lot of the game. I don't think it's a major deal for laning because I think most of the time you're not really casting this on cooldown. But I think in team fights, it really means that if you waste your E, you kind of don't really have another chance. I think Azir does have quite a lot of safety built into his kit anyway. Like he's got a little range, he's got uh, his ult to knock people back, and obviously he has his E as well, right? So again, I feel like this change punishes bad Azirs a bit more. And to be honest, most solo queue Azirs, Azirs are quite bad. So I think for solo queue, this is going to be quite annoying, especially in team fights where there's a lot of threats to you. And I think this one really changes Azir's lane. Like you're still going to be a lane bully. Uh, for sure, and you're still going to get Prime basically every matchup, but it does make him a little bit weaker. I'll probably bring him down to like, I'm going to say like a mid A or maybe, yeah, maybe somewhere in here. I think it's still like quite strong if you're good at it, but it does feel like it's just way easier to play something else now. Uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Now we have Silas. So Silas in the previous patch was in S tier, but he's actually got some pretty heavy nerfs. So base health being down is actually a big deal because Silas is very, very killable in those first few levels. And as you guys know, if you've watched my Silas guide, if you don't die in the early game, you're basically completely fine for the rest of the game. So this is quite a big deal, I would say. You're definitely going to be able to all in. Like, it's only 20 health, right? So it's not like the end of the world. But there's a lot of times where in the early game, you will look to an all-in Asylus and he will live on very low health. Um, so I would say this like will definitely lead to Silas is dying in bad matchups more often. That being said, if you don't blind pick Silas, like if you're just counter picking Silas, you probably won't feel this at all um, because you won't really be getting low enough. But it might make him harder to blind pick. Q cooldown up by one second. I think this also is pretty big. So everyone's going Q max at the moment. So it's just like a flat one second on top of that. I think, yeah, again, this sort of hurts his blind pick ability a little bit. So like he... In a lot of bad matchups right now, you can either just like spam poke your opponent down or you can just always use your Q on the wave to kind of clear it out or to CS. Uh, so this is definitely makes it harder. Like these two changes in combination make it harder to blind pick Silas. I still think that Silas is a champ that is just really, really good in solo queue. Like he thrives in this like chaos of solo queue and he snowballs really, really hard. So I don't really see this like taking Silas out of the meta at all, but I do think it takes him down from S probably to like a mid A+. plus. That being said, like part of the reason Silas was S tier before is because he was a champion that could normally not be blind picked, but because of his Qmax build actually could be blind picked and he naturally excels in solo queue. So like I think, I think still that Silas is like quite OP uh, in solo queue, but I also think that if you're just blinding 
Silas, like he's probably a bit lower than this, like maybe he's just like an A. And also if you're like exclusively counter picking Silas or you're um, only picking Silas when you see really good alts, then he probably is still S tiered. So I'm going to put him like here just to kind of like balance it out. Um, but he's still really, really strong, even though these nerfs, they are kind of big. Now we have Twisted Fate. So Twisted Fate is kind of an interesting one because I already have Twisted Fate pretty high on the list. I think TF is another champ that's similar to Silas, just really thrives in solo queue. He's like a roaming champ, he can snowball the game. That being said, in the current season where scaling is so hard incentivized, roaming champs have kind of fallen off a bit. They're not weak, but they're certainly not as strong as before. Um, but these changes here, AP ratio on Q up is pretty nice. I think that it's not as big as it would be on other champions because you don't just build full AP on Twisted Fate. You know, you're probably going something like, um, you know, your Mythic and then like Rapid Fire Lich Bane or something. So you don't just get a huge amount of AP. It's not like you're building items like Rabidons until later on in your build. But it is kind of nice for like ultra late game as TF. Like honestly, TF does quite a bit of damage in the late game when you can just like stun someone from really far away and guarantee hit them with the Q. So I think you won't feel this in solo queue a lot of the time, but in the situations where like the game is going really long, you haven't quite closed out the game as TF, this could be pretty nice. I actually think this is quite a bit bigger, so lower mana cost on W. Even though TF doesn't have like crazy mana cost already, it means that at the moment, the way TF kind of plays his lane is obviously you've got your attack speed from E, so you're just like auto-attacking the wave a lot. Um, you will use your your Q to clear the wave, and then you'll be using W mainly for mana. So this might mean that more often you can actually red card the wave, like, you know, maybe before you would be doing like four blue cards to every one red card. Just made that up. I'm actually not too sure how many. Um, but now maybe you can red card just like a little more often, uh, and that will allow you to kind of just push that wave a little bit faster and snowball the lane, or snowball the game rather, a little bit more. So I think that it doesn't really fix TF's huge issues of just being like, kind of outscale, but it does maybe just make it a bit more forgiving. Like you don't fall off quite as hard. And also it's maybe a little bit more forgiving in the early game to snowball. So I'm honestly probably not really going to change him. I think he's still probably about here. Maybe you could make an argument that he's like about here or something. Um, but I really don't think he's changed that much overall. Next we have Victor. So Victor wasn't actually changed in 12.17, but I'm actually going to move him up to S tier. And that's for several reasons, mainly that the meta champs that were kind of competing with Victor have kind of been nerfed. So if we think about the three champs that were really like high up here before, we had like Ari, we had Silas, and we had Azir. So Victor is like a really good just like anti-mage champion. He's extremely good at just beating up other mages pretty much. Azir is one of the very few mages in the game that has a strong enough laning phase to actually contest Victor. And also Azir has pretty good gank setup. So it was kind of like, even though Victor can beat Azir 1v1, it's like pretty 50-50. Um, at a high level, like Azir would gank Victor quite a lot. And that would mean that Victor had to play a bit safer. So this is like... Victor wins almost every single mage matchup, and Azir was like one of the few that was just 50-50. So Azir being like weaker is really good for Victor. And then Ari and Silas, while Victor I would say beats both Ari and Silas, there Ari is like a really good neutralizer, so Victor can't maybe destroy her as much as he could compared to like some other mages. And then Silas, like again, even though Silas beats uh, sorry, even though Victor beats Silas, it's like Silas is really good at skirmishing early and Victor doesn't want that. He just wants like an isolated 1v1 lane. Um, so like all these champs being weaker and these were the strongest champs before, I think this makes Victor the best mid on the patch. Um, I think he's just like got a really strong lane against everyone else and those other champs that were competing with them became a little bit weaker. Now moving on to Kassadin. So Kassadin's in the S tier counter area, obviously just because he's a really good counter to heavy AP teams and to easy mid lane matchups. Um, but these changes, they really kind of help that even more. Actually, this helps good and bad matchups. So Q cooldown down by one at all ranks and also the mana cost down by 10. This is really, really nice, like I said, for winning and losing matchups. So in winning matchups, it basically allows you to spam your Q on your opponent a bit more often, both because of the cooldown and the mana cost. And in bad matchups, it allows you to trade defensively a bit easier. Um, you can also use it to CS maybe a bit more often, although 60 mana for one creep is still quite a lot. But if you can use like, if you can like Q your opponent to get the shield and that allows you to get a couple of creeps, that's really nice. I think buffing Kassadin's early game is always kind of a dangerous game. And I think that also the changes like that have happened here, I kind of, they kind of go in combination with some of the stuff that changed in this patch. Like I think um, a lot of the champions that you pick Kassadin into right now, a lot of the meta champs such as Ari, such as Sars, such as Azir, and Victor as well actually have been changed. So like Victor hasn't been changed, but against Ari, like, Kassadin is pretty good into Ari, and Ari is a little bit weaker in the early game now. Kassadin's pretty good versus Silas. Silas also a bit weaker in the early game. 
Kassin versus Zia is a matchup that's good in solo queue, but I wouldn't say is good in competitive. Um, but it maybe makes it a bit easier for you to survive the early game in solo queue and then kind of outscale him. So I think, yeah, in combination, like these changes here, making his early game a bit stronger, as well as like a lot of the meta champs being nerfed, while he is obviously still an S tier counter, I also think he's he's probably like a low A plus. Like I'm going to say he's probably like about here um, in terms of just like overall solo queue strength. I'm also going to add a couple new mid laners to the list. And the first one is Nocturne. So Nocturne got some changes, lowering the cooldown of his passive and also increasing his attack speed ratio. Now Nocturne mid used to be viable maybe a couple seasons ago, or maybe I think it was even last season actually. And I really enjoyed playing Nocturne mid. He's a very, very good counter to melee champions. And I think the reason that Nocturne doesn't get played much mid anymore is they kind of did nerf his sustain before. And also there just aren't as many melees in the meta at the moment. And on top of that, like they made it a bit harder to snowball the early game, right? So those kind of things definitely made Nocturne weaker. That being said, these look like pretty nice buffs. Um, and I haven't played Nocturne on this patch, nor have I seen it in mid. So I'm honestly not sure where to put him, but I want to just kind of say to keep an eye out for him because I think it could be a champ that comes into relevancy soon. So this is more just speculation and I wanted to add him to the list. So right now I don't really think he's an S tier counter pick, but he's probably somewhere in the B tier. I think he is probably pretty decent, um, especially versus melee champions, but just keep an eye out because he could definitely be a champ that starts rising up soon. Now AP Varus is another one. So if you watched LEC, you would have seen the Caps played AP Varus versus Azir. And now this is a counter pick from a while ago. People used to play Varus versus Azir because Varus has a pretty strong laning phase and also Azir is quite weak to poke in the early game, which is the same reason or sorry, Azir is quite weak to poke in the mid game, which is the same reason uh, why you play Corky against Azir, because even though Azir beats Corky in the early game, it's like by the time he gets to mid and late game, Corky just like mega outranges him, can make it really hard to play. So Varus is kind of like the best of Corky and that you get a lot of poke, but also you have a much better lane than Corky does. So that's kind of the reason that's being played and the AP variant just seems to be better these days than the Lethality variants, I think, because like maybe the Lethality items aren't super strong, especially in competitive play, actually. So that's probably part of it. AP Varus scales quite well. Now, I think in solo queue, it's still probably not amazing. I think it's another champ where it probably has some kind of like niche cases. I don't think it's like a hard S tier counter, but it's probably like honestly a high B. Like I think it's probably pretty good. In fact, you could maybe make an argument for a low A. I think the biggest problem you'd have is that your blind pick is going to be like not very strong. You know, like you're going to really struggle versus a lot of assassins. But it's also like how often do people... Um, especially in like lower elos, blind pick the sort of champs that you'd want to pick Varus into and that you don't have a different champ to play into it. So yeah, I think it's probably about here. It's honestly a solid choice. I think there are better champions, certainly better champs worth putting your time into, but if you do enjoy playing Varus, like he is an option. Lastly, we have the item changes. Now these are actually pretty big. So first off, stopwatch cost up by 100 gold. Guardian Angel combined cost up by 100 gold. Total cost up by 200 gold. Attack damage from 40, okay, from 40... AD to 45 AD, it says gold, which is why that was messing with me. Uh, Seeker's Arm Guard, Ability Haste, or sorry, Ability Power, don't know why that one messed with me, from 20 to 30. And Zonia's from 2600 to 3000 gold to 400 gold, that hurts. Uh, ability Power from 65 to 80, and Ability Haste from 10 to 15. So it's pretty interesting, and I think they're, it's nerfs overall, so let me explain you why. Um, when you're buying items like Zonia's and GA, you're never buying these items for the stats. Stat-wise, they're just like, they're not amazing anyway. There's much more efficient items such as like Rabadons or, you know, Infinity Edge. You know, they, those are the like big ticket items that are very gold efficient. Um, and the only reason you're buying these is for the active. So even if the cost, if the cost is increased by 400 gold and they increase the AP and ability haste, um, like to compensate, it's actually still a pretty big nerf because this is like, you should see this as this delays my Rabadons by a further 400 gold. So like you would go say, um, Ludens, Zonia's Rabadons, like that could be a build, right? And so now it's like, you would get more like more AP out of that 400 gold into Rabadons than you do from this extra 400 AP here. And it just slows down your build. So this is quite annoying. And it's the same with GA, although the GA one isn't as bad because the total cost is only up by 200. Um, the Seeker's Arm Guard change is actually quite good because if you're building this in lane, it means it's not so much of a just like purely defensive item. Like I think before you would buy Seekers and it would neutralize the lane, but it also would mean that you couldn't really do anything in the lane. Um, whereas now that's still kind of nice. So overall, Seeker's Arm Guard, slightly better. Zonia's, I would say quite a lot worse. Um, Guardian Angel, slightly worse, and Stopwatch, obviously, slightly worse. I think that this affects champions the most that 
plan on building Zhonya's every single game, that it's always just a core part of their build, they now kind of have their build delayed by 400 gold. I think that's quite annoying. Um, the type of champs that affects, um, I would say champions like Silas, for example, probably build Zhonya's every game. Um, Kassadin's another one that might build Zhonya's every game. What other champs are there? Maybe like Fizz or something. So it's not like a huge amount of champs to build Zhonya's every game, but it is quite annoying for those ones, just like delaying their build by a lot. But I think for the champs that are building it every game, I'll probably put them slightly lower. Like maybe I'll move Silas down somewhere like here. Um, what other champs we say? Kasten, we've already got him down here. Still an S tier counter. Maybe Fizz, move him a bit lower as well. I think there's a chance though that this actually kind of evens out for some of these champions. So like Fizz, for example, is a champion that uses Zonia, but is also countered by Zonia pretty hard. So like maybe that puts him back here. If I'm honest with you, I'm just not really sure. I think that this is certainly better for assassin champions that aren't building Zonyas, so champions like Zed probably gain quite a bit from this. Where do we have Zed? I think we could probably move him up in the A plus tier because it's like a lot of assassins are building Zonyas anyway. Like think of champs like Akali, um, but I think it kind of yeah neutralizes out because it's also Zonyas is often built against these champions just to nullify their ult. Like even if they're AP, right? Like the Zonyas active is very good against Akali ult, very good against Fizz ult, even though those are AP champions. So. I'm honestly not too sure how their win rates are going to change. We might just have to see like over a longer period of time. My gut instinct, I guess, like as a TLDR, is that if you're a champion that builds Zonyas every game, you're probably slightly weaker. And if you're a champion that is countered by Zonyas, but you don't build Zonyas every game, um, so champions like Zed, you probably you probably like these changes overall. This is the finished 12.17 tier list. Overall, I think that a lot of the meta champs, like the very strong meta champs, have been nerfed. So it's certainly interesting, and we'll have to see a bit more like how the meta shakes out over the next couple patches. Also, I think there'll probably be I'm not sure which patch Worlds is on. I'm not sure if there's one more patch before Worlds or not. So there might still be some big balance changes coming, but I think this does shake up the meta a little bit with a lot of the meta champs being changed and also the Zonya's change is pretty big as well. So let me swap to this. Thank you guys for watching. If you did like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you have anything to say about the tiers, I would be interested to hear what you have to say in the comments below. But otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.